I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. At this time, I would like to call forward Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to present contracts L1 through L23, I believe it is. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. As you say, we have 23 items, uh, the majority of which are uh, instructional cohorts for our teaching staff, and I will go through each one of them unless you would like to do it differently, Madam Chair. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Burke. Good afternoon. Um, committee members, do you have a preference on how you would like the cohorts pr contracts presented? Ms. Rowe? I have a few questions that likely apply to all of them, so I would prefer just to ask those questions that apply to all of them, and then I don't have to. Sure. So, Mr. Sears, is there information you'd like to share in general, and then I'll open it up to questions from the committee. Well, I'll just give a, a brief speak. introduction, and, and Mr. Burke may wish to add to that, but um, part of our ongoing professional development for teachers is to uh, form cohorts with local institutions of higher education uh, that are more cost effective um, and also designed to meet the instructional needs that we have at the moment. And so we, we work through uh, the portion of the law that permits cooperative administration of programs between educational institutions. And uh, Mr. Burke, uh, along with his staff, have designed these cohorts to meet uh, the needs that we have for various specialties. Just quickly to follow up, so um, I broker a meeting between the chief uh, academic officer and the chief human resources officer to identify the hiring and instructional needs. Then we meet with the 10 universities who we have partnerships with. We provide a list of needs to them and then they come back to us come back to us with proposals based on those needs. The content leads in each of our offices, whether that's special education or reading or math or whatever you see in terms of the subject areas, they review those cohort preparation documents to make sure they are standards aligned, uh, that they're of good quality, that the coursework makes sense, um, and we um, judge them based on those submissions and then they make recommendations as to which ones will go forward. We're limited uh, in the number that we bring forward by the available budget. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions, board members? Ms. Rowe? So I have a few questions. So can, can any teacher qualify? And if not, what are the qualifications for a teacher who wants to pursue this? Carla, all teachers are eligible, correct? Yes, they are eligible. Yeah, they're all eligible, and depending on their certification, one program might not apply if they don't have the prerequisite certification. If they've also been involved in other coursework, it may limit their eligibility because teachers are only have nine credits a year available of tuition reimbursement from the district. Okay, so. Um to, to get the tuition reimbursement, they have to go to one of these schools? Um, they have to go to an accredited university. It doesn't have to be this program. Why cohorts are so favorable to teachers is that it's um, direct billing, so there's no out-of-pocket cost on the tuition, whereas in the other instances, they pay up front, they take the course, then they submit their grades and get reimbursed. This is a benefit because they don't have to pay that cost up front. Okay, so a teacher could select a different school to go to and still get reimbursement? Absolutely. Okay, and what happens if they're in the middle of their schooling and life happens? Do they finish with a different cohort or do they... Um, they usually finish, they usually finish the outside of the cohort. The university still offers this coursework. It just won't be in this direct path, and it will no longer be a part of the direct billing. If the, okay. university, the universities try to be as flexible as possible, but they may not have the next course available as part of 
the offerings that spring so it would fall out of the cohort okay, list. Okay, so they take everything in order according to how the program works, but then if something happens and they can't finish or they can't follow the pace, then... They can still finish still with that university, credits, correct. But they have to figure out a different way and then direct billing stops and they would have to pay out of pocket and get reimbursed? That's correct. Okay, and... How many people start the program and then don't complete it for whatever reason? They are designed for 20. Uh, Deb, I'm going to look to you, but maybe one or two uh, uh, during the entire term of the cohort leave. I think that's a realistic number. Okay. And do we require any um, work-related requirements for them, for us to pay for this? Like they have to work for for BCPS for a certain number of years or while they're in school or anything like that? We don't. Right now this is a, is a negotiated benefit with the bargaining units and it doesn't have that stipulation on it that they have to work for a certain number of years after they complete the cohort. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? No? I just had one question sure. and that is, is there an evaluation component that is part of the evaluation process of the proposals for a particular program to continue to be offered through the cohort from year to year? In we other do, words, Deb, how I'm are gonna, we evaluating? I'm going to have you speak to that if you could, Debbie. You're much more. Sure. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Debbie Piper, also organizational development. Um, each year the needs shift a little bit, and so we go to the universities with an overview of what the needs are. Mm -hmm. um, and then our, my colleagues who are sitting with me, who are the content leads, they look really carefully at the programs and go back and forth sometimes a little bit with the universities to ask them to modify the proposals to make sure that the coursework is aligned to our current curriculum and student learning needs. So that's how we evaluate the programs to make sure that they're the best fit for what our teachers need. Okay. In terms of um, those that complete, do you look at feedback from completers to see if they were satisfied with their experience? We do. And we send them a survey to ask them for their feedback, yes. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Thanks, Debbie. Okay. That's all I had. Okay. So that uh, covered items 1 through 15. And the next two items um, uh, are item 16, uh, which is LKO 407. 20 professional development for equity and cultural proficiency. This is a new competitively bid contract for professional development for the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency. Approval is requested for a five year term with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $200,000. Welcome back. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't realize I was next. <laughs> yeah. Questions, board members? We are just flying through these. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay, item 17 is next at MWE 81120. This is the Pepham Technology product line. This is a new cooperative contract for various technology related hardware and software for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a one year, nine month contract with 18 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $4.4 million. Okay. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi, Mr. Corns. Questions, board members? Ms. Rowe? What precisely are we buying with this contract? Uh, this is a general use. I have it. You have it. You have it, George. Uh, it's a general use contract, Ms. Rowe, that um, primarily we have uh, three new construction schools coming on board, and this contract would provide uh, the interactive panels that would go into each classroom uh, for that new construction. Um, this also uh, covers class flow that was uh, spoken about uh, last board meeting that uh, with the reduced cost through this contract, um, we would also procure our uh, Safari montage license through this and also our light speed internet filtering. Uh, but it's a general use uh, contract as far as uh, um, its offerings. But those are our predominant uh, heavy hitters. Okay. Ms. Rowe, did you have additional questions? Seems very broad to me. 
There are certain things I think I'd like to see a breakdown for. If you can estimate that, like the about how much money do you think is other purchases include video, robotic, and electronic supplies and components for schools and offices? What percentage of this contract is I that? I think it's about fifty thousand okay, dollars is so our it's estimate. Not very no, and that would be the portion that is coming from school individual school budgets okay. for special programs. This is really uh, driven. Uh, by the Department of Technology in managing sy system-wide needs. Um, so we tried to be as detailed as we could here. Um, the largest single number, the 1.5 million, is based on the three uh, the three new schools that are opening, mm -hmm. plus uh, the work that we've been able to do each year. Uh, to replace uh, various types of projection equipment in schools across the system. We have over 6,000 classrooms, all with some type of projection that uh, maybe Mr. Corns could better describe than me, but. There's a, there's a wide range. We have uh, LCD projectors, we have uh, interactive flat panels, we have regular flat panels. But they're in various states, um, and so this contract also would apply to any of those replacements that we would bring in. So we are replacing things. It's not just, I think one thing I'm concerned about is that we have some older buildings and then we have new schools. And if the new building are getting all of this technology and up-to-date equipment, and then on the first day of school, I walk into a school in the southeast that has a projector and a bed sheet that it's projecting on, I have a problem with that, and I want to know how are we doing as far as making sure that what we're updating the new schools with, that the older schools are having something comparable? Does this cover that? So this, this spending authority would cover that expenditure, but the budgetary process for requesting those funds uh, uh, works in, in the way that we've just gone through the last two meetings. So um, this would give us the authority to buy those if funds were available. I so, see. so we have always planned on requesting or identifying about a million dollars annually to do just what you're d discussing. Um, I believe the last two years we've been able to do that and uh, next year will uh, depend on the FY21 budget and where we find ourselves after it's uh, adopted by the county. Okay. So my question has to do with the contract term itself. Um, I'm curious as to why the term is for one year and nine months. Is uh, this is a, a cooperative consortium contract, and that is That's the, the term that they have uh, set term. up. Um, gotcha. And who is this with? The and Pennsylvania. I believe they oh, bid this Peplum. in. They bid this in August, 2019. So, we'll be coming into the contract as it's already in place through December of 21, I believe. Okay. And what are the advantages of this cooperative contract over purchasing through Meek or some other cooperative contract that we've used? For instance, the Maryland well, software the, consortium. Uh, the advantage is that uh, they have uh, they've combined um, the purchasing power of a group in our region. Uh, a number of the uh, 18 bidders are bidders that we have used under other contracts over time. And so uh, this gives us some pricing leverage as well as taking advantage of the array of options that are already put together by this consortium. The one-stop shop, in other words. Yes, they've, they've got but it. we've tried to be very specific about our needs in this exhibit. Okay.
And when you say the it's leveraging the purchasing power, what what are we talking about the scope of who they're working with? Do you have it? Can you uh, well, qualify that? Well, let me that? see if I have any membership. Is this a national? It's uh, not a national. Yeah. So um, right. let's see here. You meant, you said it's regional. it's primarily was established for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, um, four school districts, uh, county governments, uh, municipalities, and I'm looking to see. Uh, sometimes I have membership uh, data here, and I don't think I have that, but I can uh, try and provide that for uh, later this evening, unless anybody from the purchasing office has. I'm not sure what you're asking. The number of buyers that make up the consortium in terms of all the districts and systems that use the contract, sometimes we can get, we can tell how many students are represented or how many, you know, individuals are represented in the consortium. We can try. Okay. <laughs> That's what we'll do. It is it is a national a nationwide organization. Wide yes, organization it is. versus okay. Yes. Using something that's nationwide. And there's because been a lot of, of uh, broad in terms of what we're purchasing from them, so I'm curious. The it scope is of these are pro these are power. products that Meek Meek is always our first option. These are products that Meek does not provide. Okay. Have have we asked them? I mean, we have we are a large district. I'm surprised that Meek does not support that if we go to them and say this is what we need in terms of it's it's a possibility um they may also be us. using the pennsylvania contract <laughs> oh. for these needs okay. but i can try and see who else is using this okay that'd be good to know okay thank you mm -hmm. any other questions board members okay thank you thanks and i believe mr dixit is going to yes take the next Six, Good afternoon. Seven. Good afternoon. Uh, the next contract is ARA 214-20, and it's for the lease renewal of Pulaski Park Complex. It's a large number. It looks large. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a little bit of background information for you to understand. Pulas Pulaski Park is the central office for lots of our offices. Some of the offices that include uh, our Division of Research and Accountability, uh, our Office of Operations, Transportation, Food and Nutrition, Facility Management, and, and you know lots of these offices that I have given you in the exhibit. Total square footage is about 141,000 square feet of space that is used in that office. Um, we have been looking at this lease for last several months. It expires in June. And, and we have worked with McKinsey Associates that are uh, the leasing agent that help Baltimore County and Baltimore County Public Schools. The, uh, we looked at the leasing cost of five-year renewable renew, renewal option, seven-year renewal option, and 10-year renewal option. Uh, when we did the cost analysis and included about uh, $1.3 million worth of improvements that are needed in the existing space. The most cost-effective option is the 10-year option, which is what we are proposing. We have reviewed these options with the Baltimore County, since they fund us for that. We have looked at the possibility of other options, and there are none. So we are pretty much, you know, we have to stay in this place or lease some other building. Working with McKinsey, there are no other buildings that we, where we can get this size and this attractive rate. Uh, the landlord has been extremely cooperative in understanding our needs, and they have agreed to waive $1.3 million worth of improvement if we go for the 10-year option. Uh, I do want to recognize uh, part of my team, Ms. Liz Becker. Please stand up. She's been working for months and months in, try, in trying to get the rate down. Back in August, we started with $10.36 $10 per square foot, and we have reached to 
uh, 9.71, which is even less than what we are paying now. So it's a tremendous achievement on her part, and for the help that McKenzie has provided, we have Chris Bennett here, please. And just wanted to acknowledge these folks who have been extremely helpful. Also built in in the lease is a termination clause, because I wanted to keep uh, the clause in case something happens between now and seven or eight years from now, uh, realizing that even if we have money today, and we start building something of this size, it's going to take at least five, six years before, before it's done. So after considering everything and talking with the experts in this field and looking at our needs, um, we are proposing that we renew this for 10 years with the option at a termination clause after uh, eighth, ninth, and 10 year, and seventh, eighth, and ninth year. So there'll be additional cost if we decide to terminate after seventh year, and that cost has to do with the improvement that we we'll, that the contract that the landlord is making for us at no cost. So with that, if there's any question, I'll be more than glad to answer. Mr. McMillian and then Mr. Al. Mr. Pete, I'm just curious, how long have we been at Pulaski Park? We came there sometimes in mid nineties. So uh, Pretty much about 20, 30 years we have been there. And how seriously have people looked at, a, at buying our own site? Well, the issue is the first cost. You know, as you know, the funding is provided by Baltimore County. And with the capital needs for schools that we have, uh, which you will find more and more once our multi-year capital plan is completed, it's in hundreds of millions of dollars. And our focus always is, to spend limited capital dollar for children and for schools. So considering that, uh, the implication of putting a lot of money as first cost to build a building, leasing is a reasonable uh, option. Yeah, and, and I divided the square footage into the 1.3 million, and my, my price per square foot was a little bit lower than yours. Yeah. So I'm well, just curious well, in to this see how close number, I was. In this number that you are seeing in the board exhibit, there is some contingency that we have in case in next 10 years. Uh, we have to make changes or improvements to the area, which is pretty normal, uh, that when we make improvements, there's additional cost. And so we have the option of either getting it done with the merit, which is the landlord here, or if we can do it cheaper ourselves, we can do that ourselves. So that 10% contingency. So the number that you are seeing is lease amount for 10 years plus 10% contingency. Thank you. Ms. Rao? No. Mr. Dixit, can you explain um, some of the renovations that are necessary? What types of work will be? There is a um, list of, uh, these are, several temporary changes that we have made um, uh, to existing space that need to be code compliant in order to extend the lease for 10 years. So all of those are done. And the contract that you will see, it has a list of all the changes and estimated cost for that. And that cost has been developed by our architects in cooperation with Merit's team. So, so what types of, of renovations? Can you give us some idea of the work that still needs to be done and is this work that can be done in place? Well, is there a need for space for staff while the, the work's being performed? What What is, is our plan? Good question. Uh, the work will be done as it is needed. Some of the office realignments can be done during spring break or summer break, so they don't have to be done. All of it doesn't have to be done right away. There's painting required, there's new carpeting, the carpet is old. So it'll be scheduled working with the landlord. Okay. It will not have any impact on our day-to-day -day operation. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Hearing none? Okay. okay. Next item. The next one, contract KSH 322.17, this is just the consent to the assignment of a contract that we had for Honeygo Elementary School. So it's practically just the name change of the company. So if you have any question. Okay. 
Any, Any questions, questions, board members? Okay. The next two contract, as you are familiar, that we were, we received a healthy school facility grant for air conditioning spaces that have not been air conditioned. So the, the first contract here is JLE 603-20 for Camp Field Early Learning, Learning Center. And the lowest bidder is, uh, there were, let me see how many, there was one bid by Denver ELEC. This contractor has done previous work with us, satisfactory work. And the bid is within the budget amount that we have. Uh, so it's going to entail installation of a chiller uh, in, in the camp field. This is one of the schools where we do not have to install vertical package units because the infrastructure for air conditioning is already there, all the piping and pumps. The only thing that is needed is a chiller and associated controls with that. And so that's the work that's going to be done and this is included in this contract. Any idea why we only received one bid for this job? Any idea why we only received one bid? Is this a unique There were and six vendors that had, that received our uh, RFP and we only received one bid. The only thing that I can speculate, there is so much work of mechanical out in the market that it's just early signs of saturation. Okay. So we, we will always reach out to those six, or to the other five and ask. Uh, we don't always get a response, and in this case, I don't have any indication that we received any. Okay, sometimes they volunteer. Yes. So. Okay, thank you. We always ask. Great. Any questions? No, so then I'll move on to the next contract, which is for the same grant, JLE 600-20. It is for Caton Soil Center for Alternative Studies, air conditioning installation in that building. And these are vertical package units. They'll be installed there. There was another only one bid, Denver ELEC. And the prices are within the budget that we had initially prepared for this uh, project. Okay. Mr. McMillian? Mr. Pete, is that the old Catonsville uh, Middle School, Junior High School? This is the old uh, Roland Road mansion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and uh, annexed of that building, that's where it is. I know where it is, thank yeah. you. It's an old building. The next contract, CWA 114 20, is for Woodlawn High School running track. We have received a grant, and uh, this, we received two bids from Bainan Sports and Dynamic, Dynamic Sports. Uh, the prices are within the grant amount and we'd like to proceed with that. Mr. McMillian? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that grant? Yeah. The grant is, uh, let me see if I have more information on that. This is part of the, um, mm -hmm. The, the bond funds that are set aside for the delegates and senators to the General Assembly, yeah. and they uh, are allowed to allocate each year a certain portion to projects in their constituency. So this wouldn't be something that your team has evaluated and said that we need this. This is more of a politically that's a very Sponsored good question. Bill in Annapolis that's worked its way through the system. That's a very good question. So what used to happen in the past is that it happened exactly the way you, ind you indicated. And what we found that when it happens, those folks do not have the concept of the work that is required and the amount is required. A lot of time cost estimates were uh, totally off base. So we have started working with the local electors that have expressed interest. Uh, in, in getting grants for us. Uh, Mr. Tony Baysmore uh, has been extremely helpful in taking from us the scope of work required and cost estimate, then working with the elected officials, and then in some instances, we even fill the form for them so that we get the amount that is needed and we get it the right time and the right amount. 
So we have made progress in that area. So, uh, can I get two more? So is this something that's going through the legislature right now? This was received before. This is for 2019 grant. Okay, so last yeah. year. Yeah. And do you, is it going to be a red shredded track, red shredded rubber, or is it going to be black track? I'm just curious. No, that's, that's being really specific. Because uh, the, the red's a little bit more expensive, isn't it? I was told that anyway. I can get back to okay, you it's on not that. A big deal. I don't I'm just curious. That. All that I know that it is existing athletic surface at the running trap that we are going to remove and put the new surface. Now, I watched them spray the red shredded <laughs> rubber at the Chesapeake track, yeah. and I was told at the time that the red was an upgrade over black. I was just curious about that. I'll get you the You exact. don't need to look into okay. that. I was just curious. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rowe? So... Can you just explain to me again in a little bit more detail how, suppose there's a school that needs something, do they then reach out to their delegates and senators? What starts this process? Because I, I would imagine that we have schools that if they're not seeing things they need in the capital budget and you're telling me that there's ways they can reach out to their elected officials for grants, how does one do that? Yeah, the cases that I'm familiar with is that the electeds have contacted us, and which is our political liaison office, that they would like to do something at this school, or that they would like to get a track replaced. What do they have to do? What? So we provide them with the information about if the track has to be replaced, what is the cost estimate, and we define the scope of work in brief. So that helps them take that paper and go through the legislative process. Once it is approved, it's, the grant comes through DGS to us, and then we have to sign a contract. Board needs to sign a contract. That's all I know about it. So it's not that we approach them. Um, it's that the electeds, with the help of the communities, they get that the school needs this item. And a lot of this in the, is in the athletic area because our funding for athletic field improvement is not the highest priority. So this helps us. And Mr. McMillian? And now that you've mentioned that, mm -hmm. were you approached for the turf field at Overly and the one at Perry Hall, and you worked through a process very similar to what you just described? I remember about Perry Hall. Uh, I don't remember about Overly. Some of them are older. We, re we started this recently because in a lot of instances in the old days, we got the money, like $50,000 for track replacement. And you don't know what to do because you, it's not enough money and you, you don't want to say no. Or in some cases, it, it needed matching grant to complete the job. And we did not have matching source of funds. Okay. So, so the, we, we try to improve this process. Uh, and like I said, Mr. Baysmore's office has been extremely helpful. And I'm guessing each individual pro project yeah. Is, is detailed in its own sense. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Dixit, is this process documented somewhere, either in our policies and procedures or in our legislative um, processes or procedures so that schools or um, elected representatives know mm -hmm. how they should proceed? Because this is something, I mean, the board is made up of seven elected members now ourselves who frequently get asked, how do we pursue fun funding for projects that aren't included, yeah. as Ms. Rowe said, in, cap in our capital budget? Now, this is not something that we have initiated in the past. It has come to us. So in other words, it has come from the elected official saying that they would like to make this improvement, and what do they have to do? So uh, they have to fill a form, so it is their process. And we try to help them in their process, if we can, to get the right amount and the right scope of work. Yeah, it really stems from the General Assembly and the Department of General Services. Um, and we are not involved at the level uh, where these projects are initiated or requested. So we treat it as we treat any other grant-funded capital project. Um, it's state money, but it's not administered through the IAC. 
Right, it, but in, ter yeah. in terms of requesting a cost estimate, defining the scope of work, the steps that we assist in facilitating that process that's ours in our court, it's is really that process defined? So reach out to Mr. Baysmore. Um, once you've identified you, funds might be available, and they could be county funds, they could be state funds, they could be private funds, right? Whoever's right, willing to write the check. We don't. The private funds are handled differently. Because they, that could be handled differently. So these are the rules that are outside our jurisdiction. But what I'm, I guess, asking about is, is our process documented in such a way that these outside groups could say, oh, this is how BCPS handles these types of needs. And, and the point I'm trying to make is it is really, there is nothing we do. We help them in their process so that they do their job right. So if a for, the form has to be filled, it is to be filled mm -hmm. at the elected level. Mm -hmm. But if they ask for our help, then we help them because it is in our mutual interest to do that. Okay. Okay. Dr. Scriven, is that an area that we could look at potentially researching and yeah. okay thank okay. you miss rowe is this so, pertinent to this contract yes to, so if we're going to research this i wouldn't mind seeing a list of projects for which grants were awarded through the general assembly for the last three years to just know like the name of the project how much it was cost and what school And, Any other and it, it would be helpful to to add to that just to see if I understand what you're saying that there are particulars, and that the process is not necessarily ours, but it would be helpful to know in general who to contact because I, I would imagine some of our funding partners may not even know who to go to um, to start the ball rolling. Yeah. That's all. And okay. We would certainly want to make it easy f for them to facilitate this if they're willing to give us money for these projects, or get us money, rather. OK. OK. Any other question? Any other questions? No. Thank you. The, the next item is LKO 40818. It is for an easement at Dundalk Elementary School. It is it will grant one drainage and utility easement to Baltimore County government for service and maintenance of the public sewer system. Uh, the part of the easement, it's located on the east side of the property along Liberty Parkway, and it does not have any impact on our instructional programs. Okay, board members, any questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Okay. Thank you. And seeing as that's the, the final item, Board members, do I have a motion to, rec to recommend items L1 through L23 to the full board for approval? Motion. Do I have a second? All in favor? No opposed. The motion carries unanimously. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, yeah. gentlemen.